In recent years, the nautical world has been the stage for a heated discussion about a component that, to many outside this realm, might seem like just a technical detail, the keel of boats. This element, essential for any sailing vessel, has become the center of attention among sailors, builders, and enthusiasts, especially because modern designs have widely adopted what are known as bolted-on keels, while the traditional encapsulated keels, which dominated the past, seem to be fading away, almost like relics of a simpler era. But why did this shift happen? What does it mean for those planning to sail beyond the horizon on ocean crossings or coastal cruises? Let's dive deep into this matter, exploring the evolution of keels, the challenges they face, the risks they carry, and the decisions sailors need to make before casting off and heading out to sea. Get ready for a long and detailed journey because this is a topic that demands attention and reflection. Before we move on to the different types of keels and their implications, it's worth understanding why this piece of structure at the bottom of the boat is so crucial. Picture a sailboat navigating on a windy day. The sails capture the wind's force, pushing the boat forward, but also creating lateral pressure that could easily tip the vessel over if there weren't something to counterbalance it. That's where the keel comes in. Attached to the hull, it acts like a submerged anchor, providing weight and resistance to keep the boat upright, even when gusts try to tilt it dangerously. Beyond that, the keel helps steer the boat, allowing it to cut through the waves and follow a steady course, rather than drifting like a leaf at the mercy of the currents. The shape and depth of the keel also play critical roles in performance. A long, narrow keel, for instance, can help the boat point better into the wind, a advantage in races or long passages where every degree matters. On the other hand, a shorter, wider keel is perfect for shallow waters, like those found in bays or archipelagos, where the risk of grounding is ever-present. To an inexperienced sailor, these details might seem minor, but for those who live on the sea, the keel is the heart of the boat, influencing everything from safety to the joy of being aboard. That's why choosing the type of keel isn't just an engineering matter. It's a decision that reflects one's nautical lifestyle, dreamed of destinations, and even financial limits. Looking back a few decades, boat construction followed a method that today feels almost artisanal, especially when it came to the keel. Back then, the hull and keel were molded together as a single, continuous piece of fiberglass, creating a solid, integrated structure. Once this foundation was complete, the inside of the keel was filled with ballast, heavy materials that gave the boat the stability needed to face the sea. Lead was the preferred choice thanks to its density and efficiency, but it wasn't uncommon to see iron or even concrete used, depending on what the shipyard had on hand or the budget allowed. This process resulted in a nearly unbreakable bond between hull and keel, a submerged fortress that withstood brutal impacts, like when the boat hit rocks or grounded on sandbanks. This approach had a clear logic. By eliminating joints or connection points, the keel became virtually immune to structural failures. If the boat took a violent hit, the force spread across the entire structure, reducing the risk of cracks or separations. It was an ideal solution for sailors of old, many of whom navigated uncharted waters without the precision instruments we have today. But like any choice, this robustness came at a cost. Building the hull and keel as one was a labor-intensive process requiring time, skilled workers, and a significant amount of materials. On top of that, the keel's design was tied to the hull's limitations. There was no way to tweak it for better speed or to adapt the boat to different sailing conditions. Imagine, for example, a sailor who wanted a faster boat capable of competing in races or slicing through the wind at tighter angles. With an encapsulated keel, that was nearly impossible without redesigning the entire vessel, driving costs to prohibitive levels. As the nautical market grew and consumers began demanding more affordable and versatile boats, manufacturers realized they needed an alternative. That's when bolted-on keels started gaining traction, marking a turning point in how boats are designed and built. With bolted-on keels, the process changed dramatically. Instead of molding the hull and keel as a single unit, shipyards began making the hull separately, leaving the keel to be attached later. Made of metal or reinforced fiberglass, the keel was then fastened to the hull with large sturdy bolts, creating a joint that, 
while not as seamless as the old method, offered unprecedented flexibility. This innovation allowed manufacturers to offer a variety of options for the same boat model. A hull could roll off the production line and be fitted with a short keel for shallow waters or a longer one for open seas, depending on what the buyer wanted or where the boat would be used. Well-known brands in the nautical world like Beneteau, Catalina, and Hunter embraced this system eagerly, offering choices such as 2.1-meter keels, popular in 2003 Europe, where deeper waters allow for bolder designs, or 1.5-meter keels, favored in North America, where shallow bays and channels are common. For shipyards, the advantage was twofold. Besides cutting production costs, since standardized hulls could be mass-produced, the process sped up delivery to the market. For sailors, it meant more freedom to customize their vessels, striking the perfect balance between performance, safety, and practicality. But not everything about this transition was flawless. Encapsulated keels, with their monolithic construction, have a strength that still captivates many sailors, especially the more traditional ones. The lack of joints or bolts means that, in a grounding or collision, the impact spreads across the hull, making it unlikely for the keel to simply detach. The ballast sealed within the structure stays protected from salt water and external damage, theoretically ensuring exceptional durability. For those sailing in rough seas or planning to cross oceans, this solidity is a comfort that's hard to overlook. On the flip side, encapsulated keels carry challenges that can't be ignored. One of the biggest issues arises when the structure's integrity is compromised something that can happen due to manufacturing flaws or natural wear over the years. If seawater manages to seep into the cavity where the ballast is stored, the consequences can be disastrous. Iron, for instance, starts to rust, expanding and cracking the surrounding fiberglass like a silent time bomb. Concrete used in more budget-friendly boats can absorb moisture and break down, turning what should be a solid weight into a fragile, crumbly mess. When this happens, repairs are a nightmare. Unlike a bolted-on keel, which can be removed and replaced with relative ease, fixing an encapsulated keel requires cutting into the hull to reach the ballast, a costly, time-consuming process that few shipyards are willing to tackle. Plus, the fixed keel design limits the boat's performance. Boats with this type of construction tend to be slower and less agile, making them less appealing for those who want to race or sail in strong winds. And there's another catch. Boats with encapsulated keels are usually older, often lacking the modern comforts today's sailors expect, like spacious cabins or swim platforms for diving. Anyone wanting to combine the safety of an encapsulated keel with an updated design needs to be ready to shell out a fortune, something in the range of half a million dollars or more. Bolted-on keels, meanwhile, ushered in a new era of possibilities but also of concerns. The design freedom they offer is undeniable. Naval architects can experiment with different shapes and depths, crafting boats that meet a vast array of needs. A short keel is ideal for exploring shallow waters, like those in the Bahamas, where grounding on a sandbank is a constant threat. A long, narrow keel, on the other hand, boosts performance on ocean passages or races, letting the boat sail closer to the wind. For manufacturers, this versatility is a dream, a single hull can be tailored to different markets, cutting costs and expanding options for buyers. Yet this flexibility comes with an inherent risk. The point where the keel is attached to the hull is, by definition, a vulnerable spot. A keel can weigh thousands of pounds, in some cases, up to four or five tons. And all that mass is held by bolts in the hull's fiberglass. Under normal sailing conditions, this isn't an issue. Boats are engineered to handle the sea's stresses with safety margins calculated by seasoned experts. But when the boat takes a hard hit, like a high-speed grounding or a collision with a submerged object, the joint can be pushed to its breaking point. To address this weakness, manufacturers reinforce the hull's interior with a network of beams, known as a stringer matrix, which helps spread the keel's forces over a wider area. In theory, this makes the system sturdier, in practice, though, it doesn't always hold up. There are cases where the bolts stay firm, but the surrounding fiberglass gives way, letting the keel rip free and causing the boat to capsize or sink in minutes. In other incidents, the stringer matrix itself peels away from the hull, 
undermining the entire structure and leading to catastrophic failures. These risks have fueled growing skepticism among seasoned sailors, many of whom steer clear of boats with bolted-on keels for long passages, opting instead for the peace of mind that encapsulated keels provide. The examples of failures are real and hard to dismiss. One of the most notorious cases occurred in 2013 with a Beneteau 40.7 named Chiki Rafiki. During an Atlantic crossing, the boat lost its keel, capsized and sank, taking all four crew members with it. Investigators found that previous groundings had weakened the keel's attachment, revealing a flaw that went unnoticed until it was too late. Another incident involved a racing boat off the Australian coast, which also lost its keel after repeated past impacts, resulting in a capsize that, fortunately, didn't end in tragedy. There are even reports of other models, like a Bavaria 390 in 2005, meeting the same fate. These events prompted a broader analysis of the issue. An organization dedicated to studying nautical failures recorded 72 cases of keel loss since 1984, with 24 lives lost, an average of nearly two failures per year. These figures, while troubling, reflect only the most severe incidents where the keel detached entirely from the boat. Pinpointing the exact cause isn't always straightforward. It could be a design flaw, like a keel poorly sized for the hull, a construction defect such as low-quality fiberglass, or simply human error, like multiple groundings that were never properly fixed. In a world where stories spread fast through online forums and social media, separating fact from rumor takes deliberate effort. Not all bolted-on keels, however, are created equal. Design makes a huge difference. A boat like the 35-ton Sparkman and Stevens, for example, has a keel with a wide base, increasing the contact area with the hull. In a grounding, the impact energy spreads across this larger surface, lowering the odds of serious damage. High-performance models like the Beneteau 40.7, though, use narrow keels with small bases, concentrating forces in a limited area. If the boat hits the bottom at speed, that joint can give out, even with internal reinforcements. A positive example is the Catalina 42 Mark I, widely respected for its long, well-integrated keel, which absorbs shocks better and boasts a solid reputation among cruisers. If you're considering buying a boat, whether for coastal jaunts or offshore adventures, the keel should be one of your top concerns. The first step is to think about where you plan to sail, in shallow waters like those off the U.S. East Coast or in the Bahamas. A 1.5-meter keel is almost a must. A deeper keel, like the 2.1-meter ones common on European boats, can turn every outing into a battle with the bottom. By the way, if you spot a boat for sale in Florida at a price that seems too good to be true, be wary. Often, these are models brought over from Europe with long keels that no one wants around here, tough to use in narrow channels or island chains. A handy trick for figuring out a boat's origin is to check the listing photos. If the interior electrical outlets are European style with 220 volts, it's likely the boat has a 2.1 meter keel. North American 110 volt outlets typically signal a shorter keel built for the local market. During inspection, zero in on the details. For bolted on keels, look at the bolts for signs of rust or wear oval-shaped holes or cracks in the surrounding fiberglass or red flags. Outside, check for fissures at the hull keel joint, especially at the forward edge, where grounding impacts tend to show most. For encapsulated keels, look for evidence of water seepage or ballast damage, like paint blisters or excessive moisture. The boat's history is another critical factor. Ask the seller about past groundings and how they were handled. A boat that's hit the bottom multiple times without proper repairs is a potential hazard, even if it looks pristine at first glance. And if you can, pick a model with a strong reputation. The Catalina 42, for instance, is known for its resistance to keel failures, even in tough situations, thanks to a thoughtful design that prioritizes safety without sacrificing usability. Maintenance is just as vital, no matter the keel type. On bolted-on models, Regularly inspect the bolts and hull keel joint, especially after any incident. If there's any sign of movement or damage, call in a professional right away. Small issues can escalate fast at sea. For encapsulated keels, keep an eye on the hull's ceiling to prevent leaks, 
and after a grounding, get a thorough assessment to rule out hidden cracks. In both cases, preventive care is cheaper and safer than dealing with a failure mid-voyage. Looking ahead, keel design is far from stagnant. Technology is advancing, bringing lighter, stronger materials like carbon composites that promise better performance without compromising safety. Sustainable alternatives to lead, such as recycled ballast, are also being explored, while naval architects refine designs to strike the perfect balance between speed, stability, and cost. The debate between encapsulated and bolted on keels may shift with these innovations. But for now, the choice rests with sailors, who must weigh the pros and cons based on their own needs. Ultimately, deciding between an encapsulated keel and a bolted-on one is a matter of personal priorities. The former offers near-unshakable security, but with design limitations, high costs, and the potential for hidden ballast issues. The latter brings versatility, modernity, and a more accessible price tag, but demands constant vigilance and a clear grasp of its weaknesses. Whatever the choice, knowledge is what makes the difference. Understanding how the keel works, spotting wear signs, and learning from sea stories can turn an uncertain trip into a confident adventure. So what do you think? Have you faced a keel challenge with your boat? Share your experiences. The sea is a generous teacher, and every tale has something to teach us.